Uh, next up we have Gav. I read his little email to me, and to paraphrase a, a certain Kenneth, he sounds like a bit of a regular guy. <laughs> I love heavy metal and listening to Agatha Christie plays. Yeah. Yay. Is that regular? That's regular. Um, uh, he likes making fences by weaving he- hazel, uh, gardening and losing weight as he used to be a fat bastard. But, but he also likes Top Gear. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a vet. Um, okay, um, so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, give it up for Gavin John- Hill John uh, with the sex life of a ping pong ball. It was your fault, wasn't it? You did that deliberately. Right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I don't know about sex life of ping pong ball. I'm shitting ping pong balls at the moment, but we'll have a go. <laughs> so, Ed, over to you. So, before we start with the sex life of ping pong ball, we need to understand two things. One is the gender identification. So, you don't actually have a ping pong ball. You have either a male ping or a female pong. And if you can see the difference in the photos, the pong, which is the female version, has a dimple at the bottom, which is why it can stand on the table. So, once we've established that, established that we can realise that they can go on the pull. And in recreation centres all over the world, there are ping pong parties happening right now. Ed's probably done the music and the soundtrack for that, but as you can see, they are getting down and throwing some moves in that picture there. But it's important to realise, because this is an important part in the ping pong world, there is no ethnic issues. It doesn't matter whether you're blue, green, yellow, it's all fine. So when you're on the pod, you don't have to worry about these kind of things. You know, it doesn't affect anything in the world of the pings and the pongs. But you need to remember there are pings and the pongs. Dating. They don't like going out on their own, so generally they go as a group. As we can see here, there's a lot of them going off morph balling, as some of you probably know about, but you know, they love it. But if you notice, right at the back there, you can see a little orange one. That's probably the ugly one that's just joined along and just came along for the ride, but hasn't got a date. But, so don't feel sorry, because it can happen. However, marriage. So they go dating, they go on the pole, they work out, and then we get a ping and a pong, and they think, I want to be a unit. So again, in recreation centres all over the world, there's priests at the ping pong church, and they come along in the evening, and there they are. But there is an issue. The male gets confused after marriage. Not in all cases, but quite a few. They may develop an interest in soft furnishings, start to wonder if his bum looks big enough when he's going out, or start to behave irrationally in once a month. And this is a big issue. And then they start to realise, so it only happens to certain pings, not all of them, but they start to realise, I need to be a woman, I need to be a pong. They keep that, they repress it for a while, probably keep it in there as long as it took Gareth Thomas to come out, but they keep it in there. And they keep thinking and they get much more but then they start to take action. And the first thing they do is they go for counselling. <laughs> Hypnotherapy works brilliant with pings. It really does. You can see a master of the art. They're really working with this ping and saying, look, you don't need to be a pong. It's perfectly okay to be a ping. You can stay as a male. You don't need to be a woman. But sometimes it gets serious because it doesn't work. So they've got to think, well, what can I do? And the ping may take matters into his own hands. And this is where, as I say, the desire to be a pong becomes too strong. That's rhyming, isn't it? That's good. I like that. But what happens then? They get this overriding urge that they need to become a woman. So they start throwing themselves at bats in an effort to get the dimple. Look at this poor little ping there, hurtling himself at that chat with the bat. He's trying to say, no, no, don't. You're all right as a ping. But he's saying, no, I want to be a pong. I want the dimple. I need to be there. And it is, it's tragic. And then we get dangerous. The second attempt, I mean, this is one I found not re- quite recently, trying to become a pong using a, a drill. It's just not good. I found this one impaled on a power tool, and I thought, no, I need to do something about this. So we started to think, well, what can we do? And a group of us got together, and we thought, I mean, this was our last straw. This really took us over the edge. This poor little ping, two of these have died this year by doing this. They tried to set fire themselves to create the dimple, and it just hasn't worked. Two of them died. It's tragic. Don't laugh. It's, It's serious, this. Okay, so we set up something. We thought we need to do something. So we set up the Ping Pong Institute for Serious Sexual and Emotional Dysfunction. <laughs> Pissed. I am a founder member of Pissed. I'm there and I am happy. And we thought we need to do something. We need to look after these pings, these poor deluded pings. We need to help them. And we need to make sure they don't set fire to themselves. So we've come up with some proper medical procedures now. We actually got proper pre- preparation. So we sit down, we interview them. We then mark out where they want their pong in, you know, bits. We won't say too much about that, okay? And then we provide the surgery. We're all regulated and we do it. Post-op, we do look after our poor pings in our surgery. So after a few weeks, protected in cotton wool, we then can develop a new pong. So the ping now has become a pong. And as we'll see on the next slide, hopefully, there's no scar tissue. I didn't... Yeah, we're all right. Look at that. As you can see, a new life. So the ping has become a pong. The pong is happy now. But there is still... I know, it's good, isn't it? Is that you over there? Steve, you're a pong as well, aren't you? But again, it's... (laughs) 
<laughs> it's really important that we look. Compared to being on fire, it's much better doing it that way, isn't it? But there's further problems, and unfortunately, following successful operations, individual pings are often persecuted post-op as they adjust to being a pong. You know, it's, it's culture. It's just horrible. And you know, there are radical groups out there trying to persecute these poor things. But you can help everybody. And all I'm asking for tonight is to help me and support PEST. So you could sponsor a ping or a pong. Okay? Look, you can even choose your own name for them. Well, it's either Ping or it's Pong, isn't it, really? It's quite simple. I'll give you a form later. You can fill out your details. But what do you get for your sponsorship? Well, you pay monthly, and we'll give you a certificate. We'll send you a framed photo of your Ping or your Pong, depending which one you choose, a sticker pack, a fact book, a monthly newsletter, or even a raffle prize as well, if you're lucky. Okay? As tickets to Chapter Arts, I think. But that's right. But if you don't want to commit monthly, you can still help me in my quest. Okay? <laughs> So if you don't want to do it monthly, just visit my site. Look, just Gavin, there, okay? It's only 50 quid, and you can save hundreds of pongs, from, 100 pings even, from burning themselves. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed.